everyone. It's Queen Cole here. It's your boy King Noah. And we have Queen Keisha here. Hi. A Be Polish Beauty Supply Store yes. right here in Arlington. You do not have to go anywhere else. Come right here to town to Be Polish Beauty Supply. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to have you here. I'm excited to have a beauty supply store in town yeah. with somebody who looks like me. Absolutely. I love that. That's why I just was so happy that you would be here on the show. So thank you yes. for being on Royalty TV. And the first thing I want to ask you is, where did the name come from? Wow. So um, in my former years, I'll say my former years, you know, like in church they say yesteryear, <laughs> but former years, right. I actually had a company called Polished Careers and okay. um, I've been in human resources for 10 plus years. Mm -hmm. And so I had a resume writing company um, called Polished Careers. Mm -hmm. And so I used to help people get their resume polished um, and help them with job offers and just help them with the whole gamut. I had a lot of people come out to me and say, how do I negotiate this offer letter? Mm -hmm. um, so my other company was called Polished Careers. Okay. And so when I was thinking about a name for a beauty supply store, I was like, what do people come to the beauty supply store for? And I'm like, mm -hmm. to be polished. Oh, to yes. like, yes. you know, whether it's it. going out on a date or going to church or an interview, they come in to get themselves together. And so that's how I came up with the name, Be Polished. That's awesome. I like that. It was I a meaning it. behind it. It wasn't just like, oh, yeah, be polished. It was a whole thought yes, process about yes, it. Yes, that's, that's great. great. I like that. I like that. Yes. How, how long have you have you been in this type of business? Oh, wow. So, honestly, I have not been in the business. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've always been a lover of natural hair. You know, when the natural hair movement kicked off, what, several years ago? Yeah. I was the one that was on YouTube trying to figure out how they made something homemade, making my own flaxseed gel, just yes. all kinds of crazy nice, stuff. Nice, nice. And so, you know, growing up as an African-American woman, hair is always part of your your. Your exactly. culture, you know, you get your hair pressed or permed or whatever the case might be. And so it just always was in me. And um, when the natural hair movement came on, I just like fell in love with it. I would spend hours on YouTube. And then I was like, oh, okay, you know, I always thought that I would have my own hair care line. Mm -hmm. I never thought I would have my own store. store. Yeah. So yeah. it was, it kind of took a different turn a couple of years ago. Okay. So what has been your most satisfying a moment being an entrepreneur you know I to pick one um, I will say since I've been open um, I think the first week that I opened um, a lady brought in her daughter and she when she walked in she said see I told you it was a black owned beauty supply store mm. because she had yeah. a conversation with her daughter on the way here saying um, we're going to a black owned beauty supply store and her little girl was like but they're all owned by other people and she was like well no not this one mm. so when she walked in That's the door I'm getting a little teary eyed like this is, <laughs> like was, I love this like I'm, I'm in heaven right now yeah. I am so glad you're here it's not even funny but yeah wow. and so when she walked in she had to be about seven and she kind of just looked at me and smiled and I was oh, like yeah. oh you know because she was so happy to see someone owning a store that they typically shop at but don't necessarily look like them. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. kind of been my most satisfying moment since I've opened the store. That that's huge. Awesome. That's huge. I love that. That is that's awesome. Possible. Now, yeah. as far as um, now before this, I know you were still kind of working in this, yes. this type of environment. So what actually made you take that leap of faith of just to say, hey, I want to do my own thing? You know, so last year, so backtrack um to end of 2017 is kind of when the thought and i always tell people it started with the thought like mm -hmm. it was never in my plan it was wow. never like a business wow. plan that i wow. had mapped out it just started with a thought and i was like where is this coming from you know because Oh, the beauty supply store, you don't see many black women in the industry yeah. doing this and you don't. Oh, we're always here. Yeah, always, we're yeah, always yeah. here. Yeah. And it was just never something. But in the 2017, it just started pressing on me more and more. And I was just like, OK, God, like what is happening here? Like, where is this coming from? And so um, I verbalized it to someone else. And when I verbalized it, or like spoke it, mm -hmm. it just kind of took off from there. Wow. Um, and so all last year is when I like was hitting the ground running. I got a business plan done. Um, I went to a conference in LA about ownership in the black owned beauty supply in industry. Wow. Um, I applied for a job at Sally's part-time. 
Okay. Because I wanted to see. It's one thing to say I want to do something, but it's one another thing to be in in it every day and yes. have to deal with customers and have to deal with talking to people and helping them. To, and so I, I took that job because I wanted to see if it was something that I was just like dreaming about and like, no, this ain't for me. But um, so, yeah, so I kind of that's kind of how it, it went. And that's what good. made me really go hard is August of last year, I got laid off on my corporate job. Wow. Mm. Um, and I was like and I remember before August, I had prayed on my way to work one day. I was like, God, I'm, you know, opening this beauty supply store I'm looking for locations I can't find one and I was like I don't know how I'm gonna do it when I'm working full-time and all this stuff and I was like if it's meant for me to do both make mm -hmm. it easy mm -hmm. and if it's not give me a way of escape that was like in oh. June and in August 1st I got laid off mm. wow. <laughs> so, wow wow that's huge yeah that's huge. so wow. I took that time off and I found a location I got all my accounts open that I could possibly do I networked I did pop-up shops I did everything I can possibly do to get my name out there before I even had a location mm -hmm. and awesome. when I found a location I ended up getting two job offers which was interesting oh, wow. so I went what back is. to work um, which um, I'm no longer working full-time now um, at the present time but that's kind of how that happened like to just wow. take the leap of faith it was like okay you ain't got no job now. And I didn't know with the industry and the market how quick I was going to get a job again. So I was just like, well, I'm off. I'm just going to grind it out and figure it out. And that's what I did. That's awesome. And this is, I have to say, this is an awesome location. That Thank you. you. Yes. It's Thank a you. great location. It was easy to navigate to get yep. here. Um, so I think you did yeah. a wonderful job doing it. Thank you. Tell me this. Um, what advice would you have to uh, somebody else being an entrepreneur? What advice would you give them? Um, I would definitely say take the leap of faith um, and know that it's not going to be easy, depending on what industry you're in. Um, being in the beauty supply industry, we face different challenges than other beauty supply um, owners do, being a black owner, I'll say that. Um, but just overall entrepreneurship, it's very fulfilling, it's very rewarding if you put the work in and if you put the time in. And I also tell people, listen, you don't have to quit your day job. Because I think some people think that because they have their entrepreneur, you know, their side hustle or their other business that, oh, I just need to quit my job. I always tell people, use your main job to fund your dream job. And that's what I was doing because, you know, that extra income coming in and, you know, not saying that you might have to use it to stabilize your business. But you can get things a lot quicker when you have a secondary income coming in. So, you know, stay working as long as you possibly can unless your business is just booming and you can say you know what forget it but unless it's not work as long as you can put the work in do a lot of networking events like earlier today i went to um the chamber of commerce you know i joined the chamber of commerce just to be able to be part of that network and utilize the the, the tools that they have like there's so many opportunities to get your business out there in different avenues, you know, I know sometimes people just focus a lot on social media, right. but there's so much more than social media, you know, right. any given day, I have my tennis shoes on and I'm mm -hmm. putting flyers on people's cars at the Walmart parking lot. Like you have You're to doing get, what it takes. Yeah, You're you have to get out there and do what it takes to make it happen. That's yeah. good. That's good. Yeah. I like, I like um, the fact that, and I don't see this a lot, even though I am a, I am a guy. <laughs> but I do have I do have a daughter, so sometimes I have to have to peep up in here sometimes. But um, I do like the fact that your your business is a drop off location mm -hmm. for something special. I would like I would like for you to tell them about it, but it's it's something special, and I, I yeah. think we should we should definitely talk about that real quick. Yeah, so I partnered uh, partner with the Business Lounge and the Elevated Experience. They're a local group here in Dallas, and they work with City House. Um, children's shelter and so what be polished is we're official hub for unused products um for that's donated to the the city house shelter wow. and that was important to me because when i wrote my business plan one of the pillars that i had in it was to give back to my community and mm -hmm. to be a resource not just be a business but be a resource awesome. and if anybody knows like hair care is one of the things that is most needed but most overlooked you know mm -hmm. you have to think about the people who are homeless like like they don't have nothing to wash their hair with. They don't have combs. They don't have brushes. They don't have, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so when it comes to children, of course, you know, like, I don't have kids of my own, but I'm like, oh, you know, like, they need proper hair care as well. And so that's why when they reached out to me, asked me if I would be um, 
if I wanted to partner with them. And I was like, absolutely, you know. So definitely want to shed some light on that because it's super important to me and just the city of Dallas, period. That's awesome. Thank you. That is good. To be able to do, um, you know, in your own community too, Mm -hmm. where you live at, where you shop at, Mm -hmm. to be able to give back. So that's that's huge. I like that. Yep. All right. So Keisha, what challenges have you faced as a black business owner, especially in this industry? Yeah. So I tell people all the time, black owners face um, more challenges than others. Uh, One, resources, you know, our counterparts in the the industry everyone knows who owns them they pull their money together and Mm -hmm. like make major purchases on hair all types of stuff for us as black owners we don't necessarily do that yet we should and there has been talks about pulling money together and working together and to open these hair accounts because i don't know if your followers know like to uh to add outre to the store it's going to cost me five grand off top just to open my account that's five grand worth of wigs, braiding hair, crochet hair. I have a small store, so I don't need five grand worth of hair. Um, but it's just a challenge in regards to working with some of these hair companies. Um, sometimes they won't do business with us. And, I, you know, we get customers in here looking for a specific brand, like Janet Collection or whatever the case might be. It's not that we don't want to carry it. It's more than likely, one, they won't give us an account. Or two, the minimum is so high that it almost forces you not to open the account. Wow. You know, so I've been told 10 grand for some accounts. Like, who has an extra 10 grand? Just, just land around. Just ready, just ready to. <laughs> and then 10 grand just to spend on one brand. I can see it was 10 grand spread across multiple, multiple brands, brands, but that means I'm going to have storage in the bag. I'm going to have to go get a storage around the corner, you know? So those are just kind of challenges. And, you know, I think we should give grace to our black owned beauty supply stores saying just because we don't carry it doesn't mean that we won't. And just because we don't, doesn't mean that we don't want to. You know, it's probably a reason why we don't have it. And more than likely, we either can't afford the minimum or we won't get the account. You know, I've had situations where I call these companies to speak to a rep for this area. And when they heard that I speak English, they hang up the phone. Mm -hmm. And I got a call back. Or I have to keep emailing. I have to keep calling. Like, it's a constant daily, like, push to get some of this stuff in here. Yeah. Mm-mm-mm. And you wouldn't think that it's 2019, like people, you know, the the women's movement, we're out there, we're breaking and mm-hmm. moving and shaking and doing so many things that you would still have to come up against this opposition. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, it, I mean, the beauty industry is just regulated by other people and it just happens to not be us, you know. I, before I opened, I actually like re- research up on the industry and the hair industry beauty industry is a 53 million dollar industry that was in 2017 you know and black women's well black women spent 53 million dollars shall i say so we're the biggest consumers of hair um beauty products just everything like we dominate that in regards to dollars being spent and you know i always appeal to people like hey if you can't shop with me we have other black owned beauty supply stores in the metroplex patronize them you know we have one in denton we have one in dallas you know so i might not have it but somebody else might have it you know because i feel like if we all come together like right. all of our stores will be doing a lot better we're doing great um but you know we could be doing better Absolutely. um yeah we have competition coming up the street um i don't know if you guys are aware of jenny's mm-hmm. yeah jenny's decided to put a store two miles up the street from me on cooper conveniently wow. Wow. um wow. this summer Mm. Um, yeah so it's just one of those things like okay you know you guys knew I was here um, (laughs) and you conveniently put a store up the street from me two miles away yeah so I just appeal to your followers to support us not just me but all of our black owned businesses in the Metroplex Um, I'm not the one to take all the spotlight you know because I want us all to win right and that I think that's the right attitude um, when it comes to you know, collaboration, bringing mm-hmm. all our resources together. I think that's not just the beauty industry in anything that we're Absolutely. trying to do. You know, if King is trying to do something, him and his family is trying to do something, then if we're all family, we need to come together and yep. support that, support that, especially when it's something great. Yep. If it's, you know, negativity, obviously not. But um, 
we spend a lot of money with other people. Mm -hmm. We true. do. We absolutely do. You know, and I, we spend a like lot of money. money. <laughs> a lot of money. Yes, we with other people. With yeah. other people. I mean, this goes back to what uh, OG Poppy said um, on a show that he was. He said, spin with, with your kin. kin. And I'm like, I like that. that just rang true. It's like, yeah. spin with your kin because it's going to help somebody else. It, yeah. You don't have children, but maybe when you do have children and your children's children or right. your cousins or whoever, yep. whoever your family is, okay, mm -hmm. it's going to help my daughter. You know, yep. she's going to see you, um, you know, do, having a business or something like yep. that. And it's going to inspire them. So, Definitely, we need to make sure that we push that and make sure that um, everybody's aware of the different circumstances because they may come in and be like, oh, you don't have this? I'm going to go to X, Y, Z. Absolutely. But that's why. There's yeah. a reason for it. Yeah. Yeah. And they have more buying power than we do. Um, so, it, I mean, it is what it is, you know. But I said when I got into this business, I, when I got into it, I would create a platform for others. Um, you know, so I carry a lot of black owned brands in here that you don't find in Sally's, you don't find in Target, in the Walmart. I carry some local brands as well. You know, we have a lot of local brands here. Um, and we can, I'll show you some, like we have a beard care, like Debonair Beard, you know, he's here and I have them on my shelf, you know, and Obia, they're here. I have them on my shelf. So, you know, like I want to create a platform for other businesses that might not have the marketing budget that some of these other big brands have. All right. Well, that's great. Thank you for sharing that with us to make sure that people are aware of what's really going on yeah. and how to move the needle. Yeah. So I wanted to highlight some of our local black owned brands. Um, this is Debonair Beard. He is local here. He has a beard care line. So he has a mm -hmm. wash, a spray, a balm, and uh, like a, a butter. Smells amazing. Like this mm -hmm. is the mahogany teak wood. I just have one scent, but he does have multiple scents. Mm -hmm. Really, really amazing. We just got it in like a week and a half ago and it's been selling really, really good. So man, if you're interested in a beer local game. beer yeah. game, game, here we game. go. We got get, get it right beer. this summer because yeah. you gotta have it moisturized. Yeah, we gotta be moisturized. We don't like the <laughs> Moist, make it sure it's soft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is one. Okay. And this is Natural Jewels. Um, she makes her own body butter. She actually has a salon suite. I think it's in like North Dallas. I'm not exactly sure where. But um, she has amazing body butters and scrubs. So if you're trying to get your skin game up, this is amazing. I use it on my skin. This lasts a long time. It's like whipped. So it just like, ooh, feels good. So, okay. Yeah, real, real good. They're here in Dallas. Um, they're black owned as well, woman owned business. Um, she has amazing line. This is actually what I used on my hair today for my curls. Your curls are popping. Yeah. And your curls yeah. are popping, That's queen. Yeah. Your curls are this popping. Amazing. Love her. She has shampoo bars. So she's been like voted for best unnaturally curly. So she's won some awards. So she's really, really good. And then of course, Curls. Curls is local here, Miss mm -hmm. Maisha Dellinger. So we have her line too, but these are all our local um, brands. And then this whole shelf is all woman owned, black owned. Oh, wow. 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 That's huge. And we actually have a couple of more on the back that are woman owned, black owned, like Main Choice and Will Care. And, but yeah, so this is all of our. These are right our, as soon as you yeah, come in. These, as these, soon as you come in. Yeah, these are all our niche products. This is a mother of six. She still makes her stuff handmade. So Tanicles, like I'm the biggest fan ever. She has amazing stuff. She's out of Atlanta. Curls and Potion. Moisture Love is out of Atlanta. I mean, we have really, really good stuff in here. Quality products as well. So you're not gonna find a whole bunch of what I call junk. <laughs> so if you're looking like for quality products, we do have some on higher end and lower end, but yeah, we have a good selection of natural hair care products that are really gonna nourish your hair and feed your hair, so. So you can find us at um, Be Polished Beauty Supply. We are on 6407 South Cooper Street, Suite 135. We're right underneath the big clock. Um, we're open seven days a week, Monday through Friday, 10 to 8, Saturday, 9 to 8, Sundays, 1 to 6. Um, yeah, come by and check us out. And we're on social media. We are Be Polished Beauty Supply. And we do have an e-commerce website, too. So if you're not in the area and you still want to support, it's BePolishedBeautySupply.com. And thank you for uh, watching Royal TV. Sometimes a mystery, sometimes I'm free, depending on my mood, on my attitude. Sometimes I want to roll or stay at home, walking.
contradiction, get some factual and fiction. A little crazy. 